So we get this sock. I didn't find a way to get back up again for the camp skip, so I walk around and then the camp skip. Let's talk to Gary. I don't know why Gary starts talking to me, but he does. Oh. So I will climb up this wall now and get the sock on, on the fountain. It's pretty fast, so it's worth it. Then go back to the slope thing. I really have to get used to using splits. I never used splits before. I hope at some point there will be an auto splitter. <laughs> Hopefully, someone knowledgeable enough in programming can do something like this. So, get this one straight over to the next. So I'm basically doing all the levels in their basic order. Oops. There won't be a huge. Um, there won't be huge 
sequence breaks throughout the runner. The only thing I really I don't know exactly is how much uh, shiny objects I collect during the run and where I need more. So I will see during the run where I need more. Like I basically have to pay three in three parts of the game. That's in downtown. Ouch. For the sea needle and sand mountain for the all all of the tracks and uh, obviously dream for the bridges. Stupid mistake. Oh. Ah, good to know. So you have to be fast here, collect the sock, go up again. Here actually it's enough for to have one melon, you don't need two. Hmm. I'm eating these chocolate cookies, they're so tasty. Unhealthy but tasty. What feels really awkward in this game is the movement after you leave uh, this light. It's really weird because you don't keep your momentum, you have to press forward to keep your momentum. I believe in, BF, in the original you keep your momentum. And this feels really weird. The slam is done from Patrick. Get the shiny objects. I don't get it. How this works. What's the range is? Because you e squish them so easily. I think it's best to do them one by one. So kill one, let them spawn, throw, kill one. No, I didn't want to kill that one. But don't have them all three appear at once. I think that's more easy. So kill them for easy shiny objects. So now there comes the climb to the top. Uh, I need to split. So I switch to SpongeBob because you have a wider range. This, this jump is so sketchy.
No. For these long gaps, you get the widest range when you jump, spin, jump again, and spin again. So you can spin twice, get a long distance. Jump, spin, jump, spin. Ouch. Ah, fuck. Don't swear. Where am I? Game looks so beautiful. Let's try this set. Ah, this is better. Am I dead now? I don't know what happens now. Nothing, okay. I died during the cutscene. Oh, I had zero pants. Interesting. This boss is pretty easy. Now he's sending out his strong troops. From my knowledge, it doesn't matter if you get hit from the timing. This is a timer. Now I'll take the slide, get the spatula, get the sock, get the shiny objects. Nice. Now talk to Squidward. So now we're going to basically go into Squidward's house, get the sock, the spatula, then on top of the pineapple and then straight into Dante. Nice. So I'm I'm getting to wheels. It's pretty fast because they're all on the way basically. This is pretty interesting. 
because you can press these buttons uh, without destroying the pillars. So I, it seems like it's the best when you angle them, get really close, angle them so the corner is free to hit. But I haven't trained it yet much, so I don't know. I don't really have a setup for that. Oh, yeah. oh you can't stand, I don't remember now. I wanted to stand on the lamp and then get the shiny objects. Like, these robots are so sketchy. Annoying. These Tatar spooters basically and the and, and, uh, oil guy, I don't know the name. Oh, okay, I fucked it up. So that's a pretty precise jump, and you see the the tiki wobbling up and down. And basically, what you need to jump at the apex of the wobbling. And I didn't uh, <laughs> look at this guy. Right Gary. So here I'm first getting the wheels. So you can jump up there to the window. To the window! To the wall! And well, where right it's back. Oh, I forgot to split. I don't, I don't remember. I just split now. So because we didn't make the trump, we need to get Sandy. The benefit is when you make it with Spongebob, so you, you don't need to go around with the Spongebob, so you can just uh, go directly to Sandy. Split. But it's pretty precise jump. What I tested. I don't get the sock back here, because it's pretty slow compared to other socks, and it's not so entertaining. Like a few of the socks I planned in this route are just because I like to do them. Some are more hard and maybe don't save that much time but they are fun to attain so... Oh man, it's unfortunate. Just straight over here, get the checkpoint. That's the first instance of no. You can gain a lot of height to repeatedly um how do you call that? Attach to the anchor point. Whoa, what was that? And again, basically, it's it's a well-known bug by now. Gain a lot of height until you can't reach the anchor point anymore. Nice. <gasps> wow. I nearly fucked up. 
<laughs> let's go to the bottom. Like somehow I think um, that when you just tap the attach button once, it's enough. So let's see if this works. So sometimes, yes, if you get SpongeBob and then collect the spatula, you don't get the spatula animation. It's pretty neat. So I will split now when I enter the lighthouse. So that was pretty forward. Uh, oh, I fucked up. I just wanted to explain how to do the lighters properly. And fucked up, but it's okay. Not the major time loss. I don't get the sock from here because actually I get the sock from here. This is one of the socks I'm not so sure about because it takes a lot of time to get up here, fall down again. Yeah, this is one of the sketchy, the sketchy socks in the route. But this, I don't know why he talks twice to you, but it's yeah. So sea needle. Oops. Pause for a moment and look at my hot keys. Uh, undo number one, skip number two. Okay. Undo, skip. Yeah. So talking with Mr. Krebs. A lot of the times I press the wrong button in this level. Oh no. I missed the one flying ticky. So I leave the the hook before I'm actually finished. I hate this, this is so sketchy. This is the most annoying enemy in the whole game. Like you can't jump. It's just I need to remember I can't jump out of his way. So get the wheel. That's it, huh? This mechanic feels a little bit unfinished, to be honest. But it's okay. Oh, that was a cool one. So I have, I have no tactics here, I'm just going how I feel. And I think you can see it. And I don't I've practiced a little bit to control and to predict where the tickets will go, but yeah, I don't know. 
this mechanic in, in the whole field is pretty sketchy. Nice. Yes. Oh, I missed one. Oh, they respawn if you die. That's annoying. Unfortunate, but it's a fast one. Good to know. That should be it. Yes. So now comes the fun part of Sea Needle. Sandy. So normally you would need the cruise bubble to shoot a button and then a platform appears so you can get over to the fourth side. But with Sandy you can just fly over here and this ramp is pretty generous. You can land on here. Jump up, uh, kill this one, not get killed, <laughs> preferably. <laughs> like, you have to remember to kill this one, <laughs> else he will fuck you up when you set up for the falling trick. Get the sock first. Because after you get the spatula, you may fall to your death. So what you want to do is uh, go on the pipe, then on the top of the window. It's pretty precise because there's only a small while. Don't seem to get enough height. No. Oh. There's only a really small ledge to stand on. And now you want to fall off and hit it, hit the button with a kick. Nice. So teleport puff. Next up, we attain the socks from Patrick and his house and then go straight into Gulagoon. Like, you cannot get that sock later, but I like to get it now to see all the socks that are available for, to me in my inventory. I don't think there's a difference in time. I just like to have the overview of all the socks and before I go to the boss fight I cash in all of the five specialists in for Patrick. So Gulagoon is a fun and interesting level. So first uh, cutscene skip, pretty straightforward. Talk to Larry. So now there is no sock on top of the mountain, but I want to get this as well. So I basically activate the tower. There's a possibility to sponge warp on the tower. So I think in the, in the future when we know more about sponge warping, uh, we will go up here with Patrick, activate, and 
switch to SpongeBob. So now I can kill myself. Go directly to the bus stop and switch back to SpongeBob. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, after switching to SpongeBob, you need to first hit this one. activated talk to puff and let's go children I don't know if there's a set pattern or not I just go with the flow and, and see how they are while going to them. Nice. Good cycle on children. Nice cycle, I had way worse cycle in earlier tries of once in practice. So now comes a pretty, pretty precise jump and then one of the fun funnest parts of the whole run. So this one is pretty precise. You have to get a, a lot of distance in this, in this curved space. I need to practice this one more. Ah, I will go uh, on the other side. Doesn't matter anyway, it's not that much faster. I need to get the checkpoints, so I want to go up there. I don't know if this strat is faster than going the normal way, just into the gas, but it's way more fun. It's the only sponge uh, warp. Uh. Ah. So, I basically want to sponge warp. Ah, not quite. Even further up. That's a pretty hard one. Like in my first tries where I discovered this, I managed to hit it five out of ten times, but the more often I do them, <laughs> the less I hit them. <laughs> it's really weird. What I do is I stand here and basically just jump outward. Ooh, no, it wasn't. Oh. 
main I think at this point it is faster it is way faster to go, just go through the castle normally I think when we actually know how sponge warping works and we can build proper setups this strat will be much more useful Come on! Hello, SpongeBob! Ooh. Ah! Okay, now I get it. Now I get it. This will be the try, the one. Man, I think I will go to normal right now. Ah, it's boring. Now I want to get it. <gasps> no, again. Come on! It seems so random. What are the parameters for this one? How does this trick even work? <laughs> I don't know. Like, is it the timing? Is it the ground you jump off of? Is it the background you slide it? I don't know. It's a weird trick. Come on. So let's set it up properly. What am I doing? set up properly.
Mm. I'm so greedy sometimes with the stomp attack. I don't get it. <gasps> yes! Finally! Woo! Haha! <laughs> <laughs> yes, man! <laughs> oh, this was great. So now you can just walk around this whole castle. It's Let's say by cannons, by weird thunder robots, by everything. Don't jump on this uh, wall, there's a hand detection, the hands will get you. Enter the cave. I won't split it yet. So get spatula, get both socks, and walk back into the cave. Ah, yes. <laughs> 10 minutes, keep. So, this how this works. I don't know how this momentum based trick works, but you can just jump on it if the harder is on a high level. It's pretty straightforward. the T key. So all you want to do this area is you go around this you want to go to this island. I think Shift discovered this on his stream. How I do it is I get the checkpoint, kill myself, so I have the timer, the, the water level reset. Oh, wait, jump. Ah, I missed it up. So you go around this corner pretty fast because now the water level is low and then you get warped up on this balcony when you jump in the water in front of you get this one and then get the sock nice we go back to the checkpoint just to go And and uh, exit the cake. 25 socks, 21 specialists. Nice. Ah, oh, the pier. This is a nice one. Uh, I think Gula Gula is, is my favorite level so far. Because there's so many interesting skips to do. Destroy this one, he's annoying. Patrick is a pretty interesting character because you get this little movement forward every time you hit with your belly. 
I get this sock because it's pretty fast. You see, it's just a little bit of only to get the shiny objects, which is nice. Some nice shiny objects. Get SpongeBob here. I want 26 socks, so I won't get this one. Oh, damn. It's pretty tight timing, but you can get the first cycle. Yeah, this is known already. Clam skip. I somehow miss this trampoline because it's so small. I keep missing it. I think I didn't get checkpoints when I get the switch. So yeah, you see, you can you can get the first setter. So yeah, I'm not that good yet. It's just about the route. And I think it's 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 pretty solid for now. I haven't timed anything in detail except for some dream levels. But it's a it's a good start, I think. I found the fish skips like here. You just, uh, it's similar to the old route in the original, oh I fucked it up, how you do this trick, but I uh, normally, wait, no, okay now I got lost in talking, <laughs> ah. What you want to do here after the clamp is uh, get this checkpoint, at least uh, when you start running, because when you mess up this trick, it's not that hard, this, this trick, but it's not so easy either. Like you want to go right up to the explosion tiki and then just jump straight to the spatula walk to the end of the stage and this radio bumper robots what yeah I need an auto um, splitter for this Like I never speed ran game before, except for the Spyro games, uh, the first Spyro game on emulator, and then the reignited, and the reignited version had an um, auto splitter. Wait, you walk to the end of the stage again. It's faster than the box, especially when we. Measure in game time, not in real time. Like the loading times are so minuscule, uh, so small. It doesn't really make a difference if you if you measure in game time or real time. Uh, what am I doing? It always takes some time so the light can adjust properly and then you can talk to Larry, you can't get the special right away. It's really weird. 
So, if I'm not mistaken, 27, 25, yes, that's right. Okay, Sandy. Okay, I have to talk less. <laughs> I'm not used to talking and, and playing at the same time. But I think it's it's much more enjoyable to watch when someone is talking. And it's more enjoyable if I talk. So sand is pretty straightforward, especially first phase. What? Why? Isn't it over? I don't know. So here's a possibility for some manipulations. I don't know how this um, works exactly, but... Oh. You basically want that Sandy is landing on this side of the dome. So the head is falling directly to this direction. So you want to stand here, waiting for Sandy to jump. And that's the fastest way. When Sandy lands here, the head falls into the other direction. And then it takes just a little bit more time to walk around Sandy and then throw the thing. Yeah, this is pretty straightforward again. There's not much. Maybe some manipulation of the run distance. Not more. You can hit it pretty fast even before the sign is on the floor. To be honest, it feels pretty awkward to jump through the... Okay, I don't know where she's running all the way across the stage. The tapping jump tries pretty fast. Oh. Always makes the trick. I like the boss fights in this game. They are pretty good. They are way more, way more fast paced. And that's more interesting to play, I think. My opinion. Oops, I accidentally press the skip button because I always want to skip text and when this uh, challenge screen appears. Nice. That's nothing. Yeah, I always press exit and then I don't start a challenge, but exit the dome again. So, check. So, Bubble Buddy talks to you. Get the sock. Go in. Mamela is nice as well. Nice stretch there. So get the sock. Like that's well, it's the only part in the whole game where it asks you if you want to enter the stage, and you have to accept with with a press. And when you see the, screen, the text pop up, you immediately press uh, not 
A but B because you want to skip the text. But that just exits. So what we do here is I get this sock because it's it's fun. That's one of the socks that is probably not necessary to get. It's it's more out of the way than it is in the way. But I just like distract it because basically ah I missed it. You don't get attached to the hook, but the game thinks you are on the hook. That was just a mistake. And the sock only activates and you can collect it only when you're on the hook. Yet yeah, now. So I'm not on the hook, but um, the game somehow registers as I am on the hook. And let's me collect the sock. So 30, yes. Perfect. Perfect! Television comes now. Get Patrick. Like the last sock is one of the socks I would, I would probably don't get and get another sock. That's faster. It's just I like this trick and it's an internet interesting mechanic that you that the game somehow registers you as on the hook, but you are actually not on the hook. You're just falling to your death at the same time. So always destroy the melon after you hit the button, so it goes fast, uh, goes faster. That's always sketchy. Pay the clamp. Talk to Mermaid Main. So the melon has enough time to regrow, essentially. Melon is grown, and let's go. That's an interesting one. So what I do is I pick it up and go in this direction. You basically have to let the wait so the melon can land on the floor. Because if you want to, if you're too fast in picking it up you somehow move it with your body and then it takes actually longer to take it up. So the fastest way is just to let it fall on the floor oh, and then pick it up. Normally you can get all pillars with two melons. So what I do is get the sock here because it's pretty fast and teleport back to uh, Barnacle Boy. That's a pretty fast sock. Way, way better than the other sock from before. Sick. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Just jump over here. Security tunnel, oops, I forgot to split again. So I hope there will be some strat to skip this whole this, um, part of the security tunnel, like this roundabout, like in the original, that there's a way to just jump up from the bottom floor to the middle floor to the upper floor. Without much time loss, because going around in the circles is is pretty time-consuming and not that challenging. Oh, 
Au. Okay, not too bad. Uh, let's check when to add the next switch. This room you kind of you can just tank, jump through. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Just run around. So this is now interesting because it's another sock. It's a little bit out of the way, but oh no! I nearly got it. First try. Did the dog come to you? He wants to spawn the dog, jump on the dog, and with the momentum of the dog. Okay, from this angle it's better. Yes. Jump up here. Nice sock. This is a pretty hard sock because you need to make this first jump. It's a nice strat. I like it a lot to do. It's it's really fun to to perform this trick because you get this huge momentum boost with dogs. I won't border with the ball. It's just annoying. Maybe it's faster than some other special, but it's just boring. I don't care. <laughs> so yeah, I think the most optimization this route can be done with uh, socks. Because I just put some socks in here, I think are uh, fun to perform with, and not uh, probably not the most optimal ones. Yeah. Let's go prawn. That's a pretty fast spatula, actually. The prawn fight is, is fast, as and, and even faster than in the original, I think. It's one of the fastest spatulas. It's pretty basic, just to go out of the way from these robots, so you're good to go. Then jump on the spot and wait for the phase to end and then hit it again. I don't know if there's a way to predict where the red area will be. So. 34, 32. Alright. Yes. I will get the golden underpaint because I'm a pussy. <laughs> I'm doing the crab dream fight spatula because it's pretty fast, it's 1 minute 30 seconds and I'm really bad at fighting in this game 
especially against these oil robots. So rock bottom is really interesting, a really interesting route. Like the first thing to do is just get into the museum as fast as possible with Sandy. So you I don't know what's fastest here. So you want to go around this um, house. This I saw this trick uh, from Shift Stream, and it's pretty easy to just go up here over this ledge, go to the ball, easy peasy, and then just hit the wall. And when you are approximately at the top, just leave the ball, jump, and you're up. It's a very easy trick. So how I routed this um, rock bottom is that I will go into museum first. We've seen it because Because it's way faster with Sandy, of course. So I didn't find any useful um, skip uh, for this museum. I didn't find any way to jump up or something, sadly. I hope there will be a way, because now you have to do it the normal way. And who wants to do it the normal way, honestly? <laughs> so the way you do it is destroy these robots. It's pretty fast anyway with Sandy. So it doesn't matter that much, but... You just go over here and get all the buttons. Up here. Spatula. Easy peasy. But there's still two socks left and one painting. It would be interesting if Sandy is faster or slower or at the same speed if when she's flying or and on the ground. I don't know when I, uh, yet. Like these are so annoying. Honestly. So once you're up here, it's, it's really straightforward. Just get to the first sock. Wait. Okay, I will try this a later on, a later time. There's a, uh, the possibility to boost the sandy in mid-air when you use your lasso move. Maybe you can boost yourself up this way. That would be interesting to test. I will do it directly after this one. So I'll leave museum. Nice. So what I do here is now uh, slide, obviously. Oh, I, I missed the shortcut. Never mind. Some good shiny objects. Uh, this this slide ending is always so weird. Go over here and <laughs> get Sandy again because uh, SpongeBob is basically useless in Rock Bottom. <laughs> like this part, normally you use sponge, uh, SpongeBob with the SpongeBob, but with Sandy you can just uh, glide around here. Easy peasy and you skip the whole thing. What I do is jump up here. Kill those enemies. You need to hit this button on down here and get the sock. It's important. Like I said, it would be very interesting to know if I 
like these robots, man. <laughs> The aim so good. Like here, I like to do the sandy buffer because it's a little bit faster than to walk around. Yeah, you basically go in all corners. Like here, this is actually far enough to just, you don't need to have a sandy boost here. Or whatever this trick is called. Just jump down, so the hand picks you up, right back to plankton. Oh man, I hate it. Sometimes it just don't register this checkpoint here. Because the talk the plankton first, so if you go the, here the first, okay, that's I have to remember that you go here and activate the checkpoint. So you spawn at plankton. On the way back, I'd like to go here. Take out this robot, take the picture. Spatula, nice. Uh, no, wrong. Yes, good. What? These robot AIs are sometimes so insane. They are so good sometimes. Sometimes they don't detect you at all, and sometimes they just hit you from 50 meters. Like, I don't know. Okay. Uh, I walk back to the museum. Oops. I actually don't know how to activate the um, hook, the sandy hook on, well, in this gap here, to uh, get to the golden spatula over on this cliff. Normally you have a hook here, but I don't know how to activate this, so I'm just having my own thing, like the painting. Get the sock and just that's a pretty tight flight. Like it's it's barely like this is what I work at. So you have to space it properly, but it's pretty fast, even though you don't have this hook on the in the sky. Like there's this possibility you can somehow glitch your really bad. Get SpongeBob. The only time SpongeBob is useful in this whole thing. I think you actually don't need SpongeBob. Uh, you can just do it with Sandy. Oh, I have no pants. Damn. Oh, nice. I will get the pants on the print. So I walk to this um, uh, spatula which we just received with Sandy. Retreat. So I'm up here at the trampoline. Where do we? I get the sock. Get on the platform. Easy peasy. And drop the paintings. Get the two socks. They're pretty fast socks. Uh, long glide. Oops. Uh. 
Okay, I hope I have enough shiny objects now. Yeah, it should be enough. Oh, I'm used to sand, you know. I forgot what I wanted to do here. Oh, okay, you can't make that. Good to know. But it's annoying. Okay, I have to practice this one. I think this can be done way faster. You can get onto this window, but let's play safe now. Jump down here, get damage. Okay, I have no health left. I have to remember that, keep in mind. So the first thing I do is get the sock down here from the snowman. Like, yes. Get a sock, jump on the stone. Oh. Get up here, talk to Plankton. Pretty clamp. Why? This is so annoying. This happened to me <laughs> um, earlier today. But yeah, they, you can make this jump from here, just jump, spin, jump, spin, and you're up here. Remember to wait, so the, the hook is properly in place. What am I doing? I want to go to Puff. Uh, spit. I don't have enough shiny objects. Okay, I don't have enough shiny objects. Okay, I won't have enough shiny objects for... I have to think about that. Get the shine objects here, then go. How many lives? Three, nice. I think this is what a part of what makes the run so interesting because you have like three resources you have to keep four actually with lives. You have to you have four resources you have to keep track of all the time. Like how many shiny objects do you have? How many socks do you get? Do you get 40 socks? Get, do, do you get uh, 50? Do you get 60 socks? And which specialist do you use? So it's it's really interesting uh, for routing the game. Why have one life anymore? Get this sock. Nice. <gasps> no! Okay, that's a uh, blunder. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, at least we can farm some shiny objects now. <laughs> Only one trumpet then. Let's see. I think it's good to hit this one. Yeah, a few shiny objects. Oh, you lose two lives on this one. That's a wonder. So get this one. Jump once. Jump. Now, zack, zack. 
right up here. Like you want to hit the duplicatron and the button at the same time. I will wait. When you're in the cuts and you won't be uh, vulnerable, you will be invincible for some time. For the period of the cutscene. But if you leave the cutscene early and the duplicatron explodes near to you, you still get damage. So you're only invincible for the time of the cutscene. So I decided there to, to wait if after the cutscene. So the duplicatron is already exploded. So let's go on. Oh, I, did I split? No. Of course not. <laughs> like these slide specials are so fast. Again, like you want to skip the text, but by skipping the text you decline his challenge. It's, it's really weird. I would have designed that differently, to be honest. Like, no matter what, when you talk to him, you start the challenge. Oh, I'm stupid. Ah, doesn't matter. Because now I can get a lot more shiny objects. So what I do from routing the point is just go straight. I think that's the fastest fastest route you can get. Uh, you can go. Get some nice shiny objects here. When you have enough lives, take this one. If you have enough lives, take this one and this one as well. Because here's a pent. Jump down. What? Like who put spikes on a slope? On a, sh on a sh sh uh, skiing slope? That makes no sense. <laughs> Whoever runs this um, ski enterprise, please <laughs> put him in jail. He's putting people in danger. Great danger. Like in these remastered spikes. Whoa, man. <laughs> they hit hard. <laughs> yeah, okay, I have enough uh, shiny objects now for the last slide for Larry. So here in the last part, I go on the top. If I need shiny objects, I will hit these ones. But basically, I go here, take the sock. And get these shiny objects to get a nice combo. These are 100 uh, shiny objects. Get the paint. Like now, I hit the button without hitting the bullet <laughs> How does that even work? Bit nice. Why am I here? Uh, I want to warp. No, I, I think I don't want to warp at all. What I'm doing is go to the door, jump down. Yes, this is it. Get sandy. I didn't find a way to get up there with SpongeBob without sandy. But with sandy, it's, it's very straightforward. Let's just hit the button. Sandy. How do you call it? Lasso bug. Lasso boosting. Let's call it lasso boosting. I don't know. 
It's pretty straightforward. Here, skip. Ah, it's Sandy! Take SpongeBob. So, the only place we need some uh, sign, shiny objects now is. Like this. Oh, okay. Um, the only place we need shiny objects now is in the dream section. We need uh, 3000 shiny objects for all the bridges. Yeah, I don't think we got enough shiny objects until now. Uh, until then, I will have to think about it when we're at the point. Like the one point this route is weakest is obviously the shiny object management. I don't really know yet where to grind a few of those and how much we need. So here, get a sock, turn around. Oh no, this never happened. Like I've done this slide about 10 to 20 times now. Like here, pole, double jump. And that never happened before. This ball looks so weird because it gets stuck on the people. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's it needs some time to um, to swallow up all these people inside of it, and then it, it, it continues to to roll. So let's try it again. Yes. Okay, I need to, to practice it more. Nice. Yeah, from now on the route is pretty basic, just taking the most straight uh, straight way down the hill. Like I find this left part to be the fastest one. Because it's the most straight. We don't have to do this weird curve on the side, so it's, I think it's faster. Yeah. When you're fast enough, you can, don't get hit by the blue cat run. But when you're low on health, you should play it safe. So... Yes. So, 51 spatulas, 48 socks. I want to go to 50... Socks. So get five uh, sock spatulas. Okay, where do we get this? I think I will have to go to the like Patrick filed is straight forward. You just when he's turning, he could stand like in this corner here. Short before his turn, his ending. Go to the side, hit him. Like he's always landing similar, pretty much faced towards you. Like stand here, wait when he's starting to go in the middle. Hit on his right, he's only always to the right. 
the bag is always free, right? I think the angle is the um, the angle is decided upon um, by the way you which uh, by the position you stand on when he starts turning. So what I do here is I go on top the whole time. Cindy. You can go one, two, three. Uh, go in the box. So you don't die. Yeah. Pretty easy. So the second one is a sketch zone because in the first one there is no goo on the floor, so you don't get hit. The second one there's goo and the stage isn't over. One, two, three, four. Just go in the middle, kick, finished. Here, this corner, go to the side, platform. Go back. Wait. When you're lucky, there's no. It's always facing towards you. It's really easy. Like breath, platform, stand in the corner, and wait. Corner. Du, 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 du. Go back to the platform and wait. <laughs> That's pretty much it. it it's way fa faster paced than in original, I think. And it's okay, I think. It, it, in my opinion, I like the fights. The faster paced thing is is way more fun to play. So what I do now is. I press all the buttons. Bubble body talks to you. Go to the top. Bam. And then go straight into kelp. The reason I enter Cal before Dream is um, to is to obtain more shiny objects before I enter Dream. Oh man, yeah, this is the sequence break skip. Pretty easy, straightforward. Like when you practice it a few times, you get it every time, really. One of these things. So what I do is I do the slide. It's 100 seconds for two specialists. It's totally worth it. And you get a sock. Whoo! Like this slide is not that easy. Like there's a few skips here and there you can do, like this one. On this part I like to go straight and then two fast jumps and then one big skip. Yeah. And then pretty straightforward until the end. Double jump, short double jump. Get the sock and up from here now here on uh, from here on. I would I'd just stay on the track. I don't know if that's the fastest. I, I, we have to look into that. I don't know if that's the fastest route, but I will, I will I'll just stick to it. 
just finish it. It's more important that you don't fail, <laughs> because then you have to start from the beginning on again. The only sketchy thing in this um, part of the slide is now, like this one is a pretty sharp curve, but no problem, essentially. Okay. Wow, I'm getting warm now. Um, oh, I have no splits in here. And the fun thing about the sequence break is that you just basically can do whole Cal Forest, it means. Cal Forest is six bachelors pretty fast, like insanely fast. Like walk to the back of the cave. I will try to get the sock here. Just because it's just it's such a nice that's one of the faster ones, but it's really hard. I will try it three times. I essentially don't need it, but it's a nice jump. Like, this jump is possible, but really hard. You have to space it exactly. I don't need it, so I will, I will leave it now. Ah, I love Cal Forest. It's one of the greatest levels in my opinion. As a kid, I really struggled with the puzzles in this in this level, but I think that's the challenge is what makes the level so fun. I got the cage uh, special light, it's very fast. Go with Patrick, dash forward. Teleport to Krebs. There's a sock now to the left. It's a little bit out of the way. But I think it's, it's faster, maybe faster than other socks, but I don't need it. I will get the last sock in Mr. Crab's stream. So, I have 1180. I will just go and grind one or two thousand shiny objects, just to be safe. Uh, Skip, skip, yes. I think that's enough. No. One more time. So the grinding is pretty fast, just hit tiki. Hit tiki, start the... <gasps> and I think that's enough. So... Now I'm gonna do the Krusty Krab spatula. I won't do the sock. Because I have enough socks and the sock is pretty time consuming. And that's again, ah, I want to skip the text, <laughs> but I accidentally leaked the area. Like, I have to remember, like, for Sandy Street Dome. Okay, how I do this area is go up here. What? No, I did. No, ah, this is so painful. I accidentally I left the level again. What? Okay, now this is a joke. 
Man, I'm not over. It's not over now. Patience. Get the underpants. Nice. This time, we did it, not, but without uh, uh, leaving the stage. So, quest recap. Now I enter Dream. So I have enough. No, okay, good. So I, str I struggle with with this enemy here. The reason why I hate these oil enemies, I don't know how they're called. I wouldn't even know how to call them in German. It's because they have such a good aim. You see this? And they hit you back so far. Ah, oh, it's annoying. I have to find, like, the, the most effective way to deal with them is either from the distance, like from here, one of the screws bubbles, and then um, bubble ball. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good way to deal with it. Get the ball. Get the ball rolling! Like, it can't fall off, man. It, it's impossible for the board. I don't know. No! What? Why didn't I collect the, the spatula? <gasps> okay! It can fall off. Interesting. So, how I normally do it with setup is jump here and then get it this way. I didn't know, I don't know why it didn't work earlier. It should have, but I don't know. It's a little bit sketchy. So now I, I usually jump here, usually. <laughs> I'm I'm running this game for the first time with splits. Oh, I need to split the ball puzzle. Top of the house, nice. I skipped um, the squidbot stream because it takes three minutes for the spatula. Uh, if you're good. No, not three minutes. If you are without mistakes, like you need two minutes. I have no clue how this level works. Is this equated? No. What? I did get quick by the small one! No! So they somehow predict where you're walking. That's the annoying part. What? Oh, this was good.
Roll. Yes, nice. So climb up here. Is that this one? Wow. This would have been really annoying. So what I do here is jump down here, get the sock. Don't get hit by that one. Like what is this? Needs a dream. Okay, I don't like this special at all. But it's 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 faster than Squidward if you do it well. So this one I usually wait until this one turns and then you can go. This works pretty well. Like you have to wait a few seconds but then you can go straight ahead. Like now I'm scared to skip text. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the danger of, of declining the challenge. So these are two very fast specialists. So I'm really excited now for Graveyard. Graveyard is fun. Uh, split. And... Yes, stream. We should have now all socks. Yes, 50 socks. We don't didn't collect uh, this one here, so we have 51. There's still one sock. I can leave away. I didn't know which one to exclude, so I don't know. Probably one from from Beach Kuleku. But I wanted to show off a few tricks. Yeah, this level is is, is fun. This is a good speedrun that I think. Like, in general, this game is, is really fun to speedrun. There's a lot of fun strategies to use, optimizations. Like, it's, it's, it's fun, a fun game in general. It's very, very, very well made. Like, obviously, it has its flaws. But overall, these flaws make it a fun speedrun game, I think. Okay, kill this one. Close this one. Nice. Shipwreck, split. Nice, I didn't forget to split. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so the reason I move why I move the statue is um is you can jump up here and then go over here. So you skip basically skip the whole uh, puzzle. I like to hit this one so it doesn't hit me, but it hit me anyway. So move these two, move this one, oh, I forgot one, move this one, move this one, and then you're able to go. Nice. End of the graveyard. Sack. Split. Woo! Getting the hang of splitting. Will I be able to beat the game in under two hours? We will see. Oh, 
will this be the first successful under two hour speedrun? Or will it flounder in the final part of the game? Like the, the German translation of the game is so weird. The jokes are so much better in English than in, 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 in German. So this is a pretty fun sequence break. You can just jump on here, no hand detection. And easily jump over here to the plank. Basically skipping the whole graveyard. Jump over here because the camera gets weird when you fly directly. And now comes the fun part. You go here. And jump up. <laughs> this is so nice. And it's so easy. Oh, I'm <laughs> so easy. I messed it up. But it's, it's really easy. Like, it's not challenging at all. It's easier with Sandy than with Spongebob. It's, it's, it's so weird that this works. But it works. So now we get the last uh, spatula of the game. But after that, there's only Patrick and the jump bucket left. So what I do is I jump up here, swing over here, and destroy all f five of these electric conduits. Or batteries, I don't know how to call them. Oh, no, it's okay. That's exactly what I wanted to do. <laughs> I don't know if this is faster, actually. I think it's faster to just go back the normal way. But what I do is you go up here. <gasps> I think I won't make it now. Yeah, I won't make it now. Mm -hmm. Ooh, two hours. It get, it's getting hard, but no, it, it's easy. It will be possible to beat it under two hours. Even with the 12 minutes of trying the sponge warp in Gulagoon. Okay, nice. So now we go to Patrick. Like, the fun thing is uh, here with Patrick that you basically can attain all spatulas at once when you go up. What you mean by that is that you go again, talk again, and they stack on each other. So you have now all five in one big blob sound. That's, that's a funny thing. Um, teleporter here. Eilmeldung! <laughs> ah, this is so weird that the camera turns automatically in this sequence because you aim differently. That's something that should be fixed. It's so hard to jump in this gap. Am I stupid? Now, finally, enter battle. Eight minutes, seven minutes. So we do the pussy strats. Basically, just hiding behind. The
And it's actually a really good spawn for fight. Oh, I don't have a split for that one. Okay, I will add the splits later. Like, I would want to have a split now, but I don't. I just have a last split. No! Like, this is so fun that this is even possible. How the checkpoints work in this boss fight is, is so nice. So what I do here is I kill this one. Jump down. And... Oh, I fucked it up. And jump down. Okay, for now on it's easy. Like, you have probably seen the two or three minute speedruns from this game. So you know how the boss fight looks like. But you can basically skip two of these platforms, which is very convenient. And you never have to fight Robert Plankton on the other platforms, which is also very convenient. I find that hitting it with the um, net and with the attack is faster than with the cruise bubble. Wow! We're coming to an end! Like, you, you can do it as well as this, but this is cool of time and it's not as cool looking as when you jump <laughs> directly onto the thing. Okay, now we, we made it. And split. Bam! 155.49. Woo! Sick! Under two hours. BFPP. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> ah! Nice one. I like guess this was a good speed one. Like, with, with some optimizations in. Shiny objects and like we saw with with socks and proper training, this route can be quite good. The only thing that's very inconsistent is the sponge warp in Goo Lagoon. Like I don't when you don't when we don't find setups for the sponge warps. I think it's actually more secure to go through the sandcastle the regular way and not, not use this sponge warp. Like, when it's such random, when it's so random, it's, it doesn't make sense to use the sponge warp in Okay. GG.